Hello dear students, uh, how are you all? I hope that everybody would be fine and in good health. Uh, today the title of our lesson is Black Beauty. This lesson is uh, only part of the second chapter of the novel titled as Black Beauty written by Anna Sewell. Uh, it's a story about the life of horses. This story is not only liked by young students but also by adult audience. In this video, uh, we will focus on reading words meanings and question answers. Uh, the learning objectives of today's lesson. At the end of the lesson, the students will be able to know about the author, uh, know the theme of the whole story, tell the words meanings and answer the questions given in the uh, exercise. About the author, Anna Sewell was born on 30th March 1820 in Great Yarmouth, Norfolk, England. She was an English novelist. Uh, Sewell spent her last years writing the children's classic Black Beauty, which is a fictional autobiography of a gentle a uh, hybrid horse. Black Beauty is now considered as one of the top 10 best-selling novels for children ever written, although it was intended at that time for an adult audience. Anna Sewell died of hepatitis in 1878, just five months after her book was published. The theme of the story. Uh, the main theme in the novel Black Beauty is to portray that animals feel pain just as humans do. And thus, abusing animals is an unacceptable practice. People are mostly cruel to the animal world. This practice is widespread. Anna Sewell wrote Black Beauty to encourage people to practice kinder treatment of horses. The whole book is a moral instruction. Black Beauty by Anna Sewell Part 1, Chapter 2, The Hunt Before I was two years old, a circumstance happened which I have never forgotten. It was early in the spring, there had been a little frost in the night, and a light mist still hung over the woods and meadows. I and the other colts were feeding at the lower part of the field when we heard, quite in the distance, what sounded like the cry of dogs. The oldest of the colts raised his head, pricked his ears, and said, There are the hounds, and immediately cantered off, followed by the rest of us, to the upper part of the field, where we could look over the hedge and see several fields beyond. My mother and an old riding horse of our master's were also standing near and seemed to know all about it. They have found a hare, said my mother, and if they come this way, we shall see the hunt. And soon the dogs were all tearing down the field of young wheat next to ours. I never heard such a noise as they made. They did not bark, nor howl, nor whine, but kept on a yo, yo, oh, oh, yo, yo, oh, oh, at the top of their voices. After them came a number of men on horseback, some of them in green coats, all galloping as fast as they could. The old horse snorted and looked eagerly after them, and we young colts wanted to be galloping with them, but they were soon away into the fields lower down. Here it seemed as if they had come to a stand. 
The dogs left off barking and ran about every way with their noses to the ground. They have lost the scent, said the old horse. Perhaps the hair will get off. What hair? I said. Oh, I don't know what hair. Likely enough, it may be one of our own hairs out of the woods. Any hair they can find will do for the dogs and men to run after. And before long, the dogs began their yo yo ho ho again, and back they came all together at full speed, making straight for our meadow at the part where the high bank and the hedge overhang the brook. Now we shall see the hare," said my mother. And just then, a hare, wild with fright, rushed by and made for the woods. On came the dogs. They burst over the bank, leaped the stream, and came dashing across the field, followed by the huntsmen. Six or eight men leaped their horses clean over, close upon the dogs. The hare tried to get through the fence. It was too thick. And she turned sharp round to make for the road, but it was too late. The dogs were upon her with their wild cries. We heard one shriek, and that was the end of her. One of the huntsmen rode up and whipped off the dogs, who would soon have torn her to pieces. He held her up by the leg, torn and bleeding, and all the gentlemen seemed well pleased. As for me, I was so astonished that I did not at first see what was going on by the brook. But when I did look, there was a sad sight. Two fine horses were down. One was struggling in the stream, and the other was groaning on the grass. One of the riders was getting out of the water covered with mud. The other lay quite still. His neck is broke," said my mother. "And serve him right too." Said one of the colts. I thought the same, but my mother did not join with us. Well, no, she said. You must not say that. But though I am an old horse and have seen and heard a great deal, I never yet could make out why men are so fond of this sport. They often hurt themselves, often spoil good horses, and tear up the fields, and all for a hare or a fox or a stag. That they could get more easily some other way, but we are only horses and don't know. While my mother was saying this, we stood and looked on. Many of the riders had gone to the young man, but my master, who had been watching what was going on, was the first to raise him. His head fell back and his arms hung down, and everyone looked very serious. There was no noise now. Even the dogs were quiet, and seemed to know that something was wrong. They carried him to our master's house. I heard afterward that it was young George Gordon, the squire's only son, a fine, tall young man, and the pride of his family. There was now riding off in all directions to the doctors, to the farriers, and no doubt to Squire Gordon's to let him know about his son. When Mr. Bond, the farrier, came to look at the black horse that lay groaning on the grass, he felt him all over and shook his head. One of his legs was broken. Then someone ran to our master's house and came back with a gun. Presently, there was a loud bang and a dreadful shriek, and then all was still. The black horse moved no more. My mother seemed much troubled. She said she had known that horse for years, and that his name was Rob Roy. He was a good horse, and there was no vice in him. She never would go to that part of the field afterward. Not many days after, we heard the church bell tolling for a long time, and looking over the gate, we saw a long, strange black coach that was covered with black cloth and was drawn by black horses. After that came another, and another, and another, and all were black, while the bell kept tolling and tolling. They were carrying young Gordon to the churchyard to bury him. He would never ride again. What they did with Rob Roy, I never knew, but 'twas all for one little hair. End of chapter. Read by Lorraine Montgomery. 
for lit to go on the web at fcit.usf.edu. Now, words meanings. Uh, the first word is circumstance. Circumstance means a particular incident are happening. Next is mist. Mist means haze, fog. The third one is frost. Frost means a deposit of small white ice crystal formed on the ground or other surfaces when the temperature falls below freezing. Meadows. Meadows means pastures, grassy lands. Cold. A young male horse pricked up his ears. This expression means uh, became alert, listened carefully. Hedge. Hedge means fence. A boundary formed by closely growing bushes or shrubs. Next is hunt. Uh, it is uh, used here as a noun, the chase of animals being hunted. Uh, the next word is howl. Howl means uh, a long doleful cry uttered by an animal such as a dog or wolf or a fox. Whine. Whine means a long high pitched complaining cry. Galloping. Galloping means running at a fast speed. Uh, snorting. Snorting means made a sudden explosive sound through one's nose. Uh, noses to the ground. Smelling the ground. Scent. Scent means a trail indicated by the characteristic smell of an animal. Uh, making straight far. Going towards a place. Wild with fright. With ex an extreme fear. Uh, leap means jump. Next is turned sharp round. It means came suddenly in an opposite direction. Uh, were upon her, were attacking her. Whipped off, removed something with a swift movement. Shriek. Shriek means a high pitched piercing sound. Astonished, greatly surprised, amazed. Brook. Brook means a small stream groaning groaning means making a deep sound of pain make out deal with a situation successfully manage something uh, the next word is spoil spoil means to destroy or reduce the pleasure interest or beauty of something the last is tear up. Tear up means damage, harm. Questions and answers. Question A. Uh, the horse says, my mother and an old riding horse seem to know all about it. What was it that they knew about? How did they know? Answer, the horse's mother and an old riding horse seem to know all about the hunt and the way men ride good horses and use dogs to catch wild creatures such as the hares and foxes. Perhaps they too had experienced such kinds of hunts in the past. Question B, why did the dog stop barking and begin to run about with their noses to the ground. Answer: The dogs stopped barking and began to run with their noses to the ground because they had lost sight of the hare and were trying to find its scent again. Question C: Which lines tell us that some of the horses wanted to join the horses on the hunt? What did they wish to join in with? Answer. Uh, these lines tell us that some of the horses wanted to join the hunt. 
the old horses snorted and looked eagerly after them and we colts young colts wanted to be galloping with them it seems as if the horse wished to join in with the galloping question b why was the hare wild with fright answer the hare was wild with fright because the dogs were chasing it question e uh, how did the hare meet her end answer the hare tried to get through the fence it was too thick and she turned sharply round to make for the road but it was too late the dogs were upon it with their wild cries and thus it met its end question d why was the young horse the storyteller astonished answer uh, the young horse the storyteller was astonished by the sight of these men on fine horses with barking dogs chasing and killing a hare maybe that was their first experience to see animals being hunted by human beings grotesquely question h uh, how do we first realize that a horse not a human being is telling the story uh, base your answer on the passage alone not the introduction answer we first realize that a horse not a human being is telling the story when we come across the sentence i and the other colts were feeding at the lower part of the field here it is the first person pronoun the last question question i uh, which other animals apart from the hare suffered or were harmed during the hunt answer uh, two horses and a man were injured in the hunt one man died and presumably the dogs would have been hurt when they were whipped this is all for today uh, thank you very much for your listening take care goodbye